Nice to see you all here. You love coming out in the cold, <laughs> like me, no. <laughs> so um, I don't have too much announcements here. It's just the rummage sale on November 5th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. will be mainly <clears throat> limited to cold weather clothing due to the um, polling equipment needed to have been in the basement on the set. Anybody want to ask me anything? Didn't think so. Okay, I have a little something here. Okay. A naughty little boy had been sent to the corner during Sunday school. <laughs> that would be me. No, I'm a girl. After a while, he approached the pre teacher, telling her he had thought of the things over and asked God for help. That was wise of you, said the teacher. I'm sure God heard your prayer and will help you to stop misbehaving. Oh, I didn't ask him to help me, the boy replied. I asked God to help you put up with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> well, he's taking small steps at a time. Sometimes isn't that the way life is, though? You know, it's one of those situations where... <laughs> Um, a, an announcement uh, from the district level. Um, every year the district has a leadership academy. Um, that happens this Saturday um, at 8 a.m. to 12.30 in Shelby at Trinity United Methodist Church there. Um, they're having some really good conversations, um, uh, church security, uh, conversations on the status of General Conference 2020 and the United Methodist Church. Um, that's being led by two of our delegates to General Conference. So if you really want a good update on what's going on and where the next steps are, that's a good panel to attend. Um, Covenant Discipleship, uh, Paul White will be presenting John Wesley 101. So if you ever wanted to learn about John Wesley, Paul White is the premier gentleman in our conference to learn John Wesley from. He has several of John Wesley's sermons memorized. He's even um, gone out as John Wesley in character. Um, he is a riot, um, and he will always make that kind of panel fun. It will be enjoyable. Um, uh, one titled Making Room at the Table, which talks about how we reach um, newer, younger, and a more diverse people, which is a portion of our um, mission statement as a church. Uh, Reimagining Young People's Ministries, and then uh, a simplified accountable leadership, which is the new title for the one board model. So if you'd like an intro to the one board model also. Um, so that's seven different panels. You get to pick three and attend three of the seven. So for some reason, my printer 
did this to the brochure <laughs> instead of the right way it's supposed to. Um, so if you would like information, I can make a copy of it, just know that it's gonna be awkward. Um, and uh, that is this Saturday from 8 to 12.30. And these are some really good panels, and if you'd like some questions answered, these are really kind of the way to go. Um, you won't get any better answers or any better discussion or any better presentation than the people who are presenting these panels. So um, I highly recommend, unfortunately, I am committed to another event, but um, I have been several years and I'm familiar with some of this content. So um, if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, and of course you can also find that um, on our Mid-Ohio District website um, if you would like to do it online and register online. Are there any other announcements? Then let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear the call to worship from Psalm 146. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that with your strength we may run the race that so many before us have faithfully run. Through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue our worship as we turn to 569 in your blue hymnal. We have a story to tell to the nations, and you may stand in body or in spirit.
Almighty God in this moment of remembrance, we are blessed to be able to bring to you all of the blessings as well as all of the needs and the concerns that are on our own hearts and minds. Lord, this morning we do celebrate the gifts that have been brought before you, gifts of time, talent, gifts that are here in the form of financial resources, gifts that are still in the heart of the giver. And we thank you for the many gifts that you have given us that we are able to share to the world. We ask your blessing on all these that they may be used for your service. We lift before you also the concerns that are on our own hearts and minds, the needs of not only our family, but also the needs of the community. We lift before you the family of Ken Smetzer as they grieve the loss of their loved one. And for all of those who are traveling we ask that you grant them safety as they travel back to their homes. We lift before you those who are fighting with health challenges, including Howard, as he battles through these uncertain circumstances, and Tim as he has been admitted to the hospital. We lift before you Carol's stepdaughter as she approaches the surgery for her hysterectomy as she prepares for that time. We lift before you Bruce as he prepares for his surgery on his arteries. Lord, you are the God of healing. Place your healing hand in all of these situations and in those who are preparing to come for care under doctors and nurses and other staff. May those persons be your hand of healing to all. We lift before you Lori as she deals with many family and school challenges. And we pray that the time that she gets to spend with her family in Akron may be blessed and safe as she deals with her the separation of the family with the children in school and the challenges of the identity theft. Lord, we lift before you those who are on our prayer list. And this morning especially, we remember the families, the friends, the loved ones, of those that we named this morning, those that loved Amanda and Bob and Jason and Ellen and John and Sue, and those that love the many names that we mentioned in our hearts this day. We lift their spirits and their families and their friends up to you. We do this in a sense of remembrance, a sense of honor, a sense of praise of those who have gone before us and who have taught us so many things about you, Lord. And we do this in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. not um, very familiar to you. This is a piece that is very commonly used on All Saints Day to celebrate the, the lives of the saints who have gone before us. And we will sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 6, but we will also begin by hearing the melody all the way through. 
So you will hear the whole uh, piece. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with, with this piece, just on page, on the, on the right hand page, ignore the where it says harmony. That's just harmony for verse four. If you really want to sing it, feel free. But um, the song ends with the Alleluia and then repeats back to the beginning. So um, let us remain seated, but join our voices in thunderous praise for all the saints. to be um, a, a celebrated holiday where we got this sense that there was a time of the year to celebrate that thin spot between the worlds where at least that was the that was the ancient tradition where the spiritual world was closer to us than ever before and so that for Christians became this time to to really remember those who had gone on to uh, to heaven those who were now in spirit instead of in body and when the Catholic Church kind of officially made All Saints Day the day after Halloween it technically made Halloween All Saints Eve 
And so as we come this morning, uh, we are technically worshiping on All Saints Eve this morning, and we are um, remembering the tradition uh, that has been long established within the church. Now, when Martin Luther came to the Reformation, Martin Luther kind of looked at All Saints Day and said, it's too Catholic. And what happened is Protestants now have a tendency to celebrate Reformation Day, especially Lutherans, um, on this same weekend, uh, particularly on, on November 1st. Um, and so for those of us who've come from a mixed tradition, uh, this is definitely a day where, or a weekend where there's a lot going on, <laughs> let's just say that way. Um, and so sometimes uh, a good way to kind of just focus in on this weekend, whether you, you know, you recognize Reformation Day and the, you know, the hanging of the 95 theses on, on the door, whether you, you recognize All Saints Day, whether you're a person who does in some way celebrate Halloween, whatever this might be, whatever this very confusingly labeled weekend may be, it is a time to recognize those who have gone before us. And that includes even Reformation Day. Reformation Day is a time to honor the church fathers who, who broke away from some traditions and who moved on to new ones and who uh, looked at some aspects of the church and said, this isn't life-giving. This, this is not something that is building the church up. And it's kind of uh, fitting that we explore this scripture also around this Reformation Day because the situation that's occurring prior to this scripture is a bunch of people are basically trying to catch Jesus in, this, uh, in these theological discussions, in these discussions about the law. And we begin after that kind of cage match has gone on. Everybody's brought out their best fighter. Jesus has shot them all down. And the, the uh, Pharisees, the other teachers of the law, are kind of like, oh, not sure what to do now. And a scribe comes to Jesus. Now, a scribe was literally someone who scribed the text, who wrote the text. There were no copy machines. There were no computers. And so if you wanted a new copy of the Hebrew text, of the text of what we call the Old Testament, you had to write it out. Scribes were people who were well recognized for their ability to read, as well as their ability to write, and as well as their ability to um, make sure that whatever they're copying makes sense, because sometimes there were errors in other copies before that they had to make sure in order to correct. And so this was a very learned person who literally wrote the scriptures. They sat there and copied scripture after scripture so that others could have, other temples, other areas, could have copies of the scripture. So this is a person who has literally written the law and all of its length more than once through. Now, if you remember the, the tendency uh, of teachers when you were bad to make you write a sentence over and over and over and over so that you remembered the concept, this is where the scribes were. They were so invested in the text that most of them had portions of it memorized easy. And so he comes to Jesus after all of this big fight has gone on, and you're not sure whether he's trying to challenge him or whether he's really just trying to get an honest answer. He's watched this mess go on, and it didn't help him, <laughs> and now he wants to get an honest answer. And it seems the way that Christ treats him at the end, and it does seem he was after an honest answer because he too himself understood the answer. So whether he's testing Jesus or just making sure he's got the right idea, we're not really sure in terms of our context. But either way, he's coming to Jesus and he's getting this interpretation out of Jesus that is different than would have been interpreted at the time. There would have been arguments over which commandment was the greatest, over which law you followed the best, over, it was literally the, the, the discrep discrepancies between the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the other teachers of the law were always about which portion of the text was the right portion to read into. 
And Jesus says the surprising thing. He doesn't compete one law over another in terms of, you know, Sabbath law versus others. He pulls out a text that is, uh, in, in the Hebrew, is called the Shema. That's because Shema means here. So it's the first letter or the first word of the sentence. Um, but it is, a, it is an iconic text for the Hebrews because often it is how God declared himself. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. This is a very, very important text to the people that Jesus is preaching to. And so he pulls out that text and he continues with, oh, you shall love the Lord your God with everything. We've heard this scripture uh, hundreds of times. And then says, and then in addition, um, but related to the first, as we see in other texts, he basically says, but related to the first, you can't separate the two of them. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the scribe basically applauds Jesus. I mean, that's <laughs> a little pretentious there, but it's okay. And says, you're right to say these things. All of this is important than in, than more important than any sacrifice, any offering, anything you bring to the temple, any of the laws that have gone before, these are indeed the most important. And when Jesus sees that the scribe truly recognizes the importance of that portion of the scripture, that portion of teaching, that portion of God's command, he says a very reassuring thing so reassuring in fact that we get the sense that after that point nobody else dares to ask jesus any questions you are not far from the kingdom of god and that pretty much shuts everybody up this person who had the literally had the scripture memorized who literally wrote the scriptures this person comes to Jesus, and the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and the teachers of the law, and the other people are probably thinking, oh, he is going to shut Jesus down. But instead, Jesus commends him for his wisdom and his faith. Unlike he has ever commended anyone publicly before. And the whole audience, Ooh. no further questions, Your Honor. When we talk about the saints of God, those who have preceded us into eternity, sometimes the important part to hear is just the reassuring words of Jesus. You are not far from the kingdom of God. Despite the, the trials and the challenges that we have in our lifetime, Despite the, all the things that we always feel we don't live up to, all these expectations of God, all these expectations of the law for the Hebrews, all of these things, what's most important to be close to the kingdom of God is loving God and loving your neighbor. It's as simple as that. There's no complex formulas that you truly need in order to get to the kingdom of God. There's no, uh, you know, contract you have to sign that details all of the things you have to do through your life. There's no agreement that says if you mess up here or you mess up there or you mess up in another place that your, your connection to God is threatened. Instead, this is a reassurance that if you indeed follow these two commandments, if you love God with everything that you have, and you love your neighbor as yourself, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And so all of the things that those who have gone before us have messed up in, failed in, tripped up over, had challenges with, all of those circumstances, those are those are gone. Those are, if, it's as if they never were. If they loved God, loved others, the reassurance is they 
have experienced the kingdom of God. And the reassurance is, no matter how many times we flop, we fail, we trip, we stumble, if we love God and we love others, we are not far from the kingdom. Those challenges that were in the lives of our loved ones and the lives of the saints who have gone before us, those difficulties, those times when they weren't perfect, those have passed into oblivion. And the love that they had for God and the love that they had for another carried them and will carry us into the kingdom of God. Now, you've heard me say that the kingdom is in the future as well as now, now and not yet. There's an aspect of this that says, if you love God and you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not far from the kingdom because you're bringing the kingdom to the world. So while we celebrate the saints that have gone on to the eternal kingdom, we also remember that our lives are not just about getting there eventually. If we love God and we love our neighbor as ourself, we bring the kingdom close to us here on earth. And we also celebrate the lives of the saints who did that while they were here. Who brought God closer to us, closer to their loved ones, closer to their friends, closer to the world around them because of their love for God and their love for others. We celebrate them and we recognize the dedication that they had to God. Sometimes quietly in their hearts, sometimes bold and brash and big and effervescent flowing from them but we know that their promise is our promise we will experience the kingdom if we commit to loving God and loving one another this morning as we celebrate the saints as we remember in our hearts those loved ones who taught us who guided us, who lived by an example, who were influential not only in the building up of our physical lives, but also the building up of our spiritual lives. We not only recognize their devotion to the kingdom of God, but also we seek to learn from their example to love God love one another, that we may indeed be near to the kingdom now and in eternity. So as we close our time together, we'll join in singing Shall We Gather at the River, which recognizes this gathering of saints, this gathering of those who have dedicated their lives to God. And this is a a physical gathering at the eternal river, but it's also a spiritual gathering of all of those who have gone before us as we connect with them through Christ and through the Spirit of God. So let us stand in body or in spirit and join the same 500, 491 in our red hymnal, Shall We Gather the River?
the light of the saints who have gone before us live on in the hearts of each and every one of us. May we be guided by their example. May we live a life worthy of the kingdom that we may join them in eternity. Amen and amen. <laughs>